love, art, and community in the time of coronavirus. Asynchronous Arts is a project that began in the early months of 2020, uh, inspired by the need to connect with one another, even in this time of pandemic. A desire to sustain each other in our local community with our art, a little bit like local food. We can grow it here and share it with one another and let it be a beautiful, sustaining thing and a way to connect safely around the arts. Async Arts has ended up to be really multifaceted. It started with chalk art in the park. There's been outdoor dance classes, um, kind of art tourism, visiting murals in progress, uh, poems and and photographs in the windows of local businesses. It's been a really multifaceted um, art experience. So uh, I am a local artist. I'm primarily a photographer and a poet and a dancer, but my day job is as a computer science professor at Clarkson University. So I'm very embedded in my local community in lots of different ways and felt very inspired to want to help our community connect safely around something beautiful in a difficult time. Do you consider yourself the founder of Async Arts? Yeah, I, I, am, a, I am the founder of Async Arts and also uh, Lisa Probst, also from Clarkson University and Maggie McKenna from the, the SLC Arts was really the three of us who founded Async Arts. It's been surprising how many different media we were able to include from music to chalk to visual art, charcoal, paint, outdoor paint in murals, dance. It really has been a very rich set of media and even including things like flower arranging and gardening and things that people are truly artists when they do but they don't always think of themselves as artists. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how sometimes limits can bring out a lot of creativity. When you have anything you can do, um, sometimes that feels overwhelming. And when there's a strict constraint, sometimes that brings out some beautiful creativity. We really did get creative in ways to connect over art uh, safely. What was the first thing you did? Where did you start? Ah, uh, yes, the very first event was at Ives Park in Potsdam, right next to the river. And a local artist, Chris Rozelle, and I brought chalk. I brought a coffee can with an Async Arts logo on it and a little sign on the top that says, borrow me, make some chalk art, take photos and tag them, then put me back. Chris drew a lovely set of phoenix wings in the middle of the gazebo. And then, you know, we left the can there and wondered what would happen. And I stopped back every day or so. And it was really fun to watch all the different chalk art blossom in the gazebo. And then even the phoenix wings, it was really lovely to watch them evolve. Like someone made it into an angel, made an angel around the phoenix wings. And then someone had put a crown on her head. And it wasn't too long after we had started the Chalk Art in Ives Park that Potsdam, which is a very small town, had a huge Black Lives Matter rally. Liza LaBarge Page, a, a local artist, made a gorgeous set of portraits of Breonna Taylor and Trayvon Martin and George Floyd right in the middle of the gazebo. That connection just, I think, felt very, very profound to all of us. Eventually, the town did decide to kind of clean the gazebo and, and, and put the chalk away. And it was always ephemeral. Chalk art is ephemeral. And um, we, we moved on to other projects. Another thing that happened was um, this guerrilla gardening project. If you if people had extra tomatoes or extra pears or extra hot peppers, we just packaged them up in boxes and took them to people's houses. That kind of art of building community, of connecting with your neighbors, of sharing something beautiful and sustaining with the people near you. I think my favorite event would have to be Nude with Food. It was a plein air art at Bird's Foot Farm. When people could come and sketch the head farmer beautifully nude in her own fields and that just felt like a really amazing connection between local food and local art. 
We live in a, in a county that's really large. It doesn't have a ton of people in it. So there's always a need for help connecting local artists together, artists with people who would like to enjoy their art. And I think there is something about this community also that's a little bit self-sustaining or a little gritty. When COVID restrictions are lifted, I think we're gonna have kind of a new palette of choices. And I think that we will still want to come together physically when that really adds to the event. Having this new tool in our toolkit, I think is going to be good for us all.